you. Welcome back to the ESL Hearthstone Legendary Series. This is day two of the Redemption Tournament. Once again, I'm Osmo Cutie. Join with Frodan. We just saw the big sock chalk take a victory. <laughs> That's right. I'm glad, I'm glad that nickname's catching on since the Season 1 Finals. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I yeah. use it every single time. Big sock chalk. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's only when he goes really big, though. and He's going to need to come up huge for the next couple of matches. We'll talk about that uh, when the time comes. In the meantime, we've got Mon Leper versus... Lead Paint. Lead Paint, a player who qualified twice, failed twice, but gets two more chances as for... Excuse me. <laughs> I had a, a cup of water really quick before. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all burpy and bloaty, man. This is what happens. Okay, so this is the, the reality. Is I know we're gonna, we can talk about the lineup in just a sec, but as casters, we get a few minutes just to snarf down whatever yeah. food or drink that we have, and so we have to rush. Naturally, some you know gas starts to build up in the stomach, and we start burping a little bit, and, you know, DJ farts on occasion. I've never eaten a falafel so quickly. Yeah. And it makes me very gassy. He inhaled it, literally. <laughs> and so uh, I apologize for my rude behavior. I hope uh, people are not too grossed out. No. To make it up to you, I promise that this series will be fun. We have Warrior vs. Uh, Warriors... Uh, we have uh, Warlocks, but we have Hunter and Druid as a split. We're going to start off with Warlock versus Warlock. Do you think it's Handlock versus Handlock, or do you think it's Zoo versus Zoo? I think there's a demon thrown there. Do you think there's a possibility of dragons being involved? I actually don't think there's a possibility of dragons being involved. But, okay, that's too bad. Um, I mean, there's a very small... What about small Murlocs? Do you think there's a possibility of yeah, Murlocs being one, involved? 100%. Murlocs are just the way to go. Aggro Rogue's making it come back. It's it's about time that Murloc Rogue. We saw Soul Fire earlier from 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 Chalky, so wouldn't be surprised with anything. Uh, probably two hand locks. Um, judging by these players' histories, judging after talking to them with the decks that they like. Um, but I, I mean, we'll have to see. Uh, players can have a lot of benefit from being uh, unpredictable, and these two players especially because. Um, and Le Lead Paint has been exposed a lot because he's participated in two weeks. And he's improved over time. In week two, he did a really bad performance. He was the first player eliminated, so tied for seven. He had a total game score of two and six. Uh, whereas in week three, he actually made it to fifth. And he had a positive game score of seven to six. And it seemed like he was improving. He uh, was one of the players that beat Oskaka. He beat Oskaka 3-0, which is a pretty impressive feat. And so if, uh, if that pattern continues, then he's going to have a pretty successful day. Fair enough. Uh, we'll see. The path to success begins now. We have Implosion, Earthling, Farseo, hmm. Sludge Belcher. So that looks to me like if I were to just take a wild guess, I would say that's the combo warlock. Yeah. If I were to take a wild guess. Now, of course, it could be just a ship demon lock. It could, could be, be dragon a warlock. hand lock. It could be dragon warlock. It could be. Straight up handlock with just implosions to control the state of the board. Yeah, but I don't know why you'd play that over Twilight Drakes. In the meantime, Mon Leper, pretty usual stuff. Mountain Giant, Twilight Drakes, just to capitalize on the patrons and make their lives difficult. Whoa! You said, TJ, there was a 0% chance that dragons were involved. No. <laughs> you promised! But then you swore! And then I saw the mulligans and TJ, I, I saw the mulligans! Swear to me! <laughs> Then I saw the mulligans, and I said, oh, well, that looks like a lot like Dragon Warlock. DJ. I took it back. I, I immediately think we should my cast statement. with other people. <laughs> I've been thinking about it for a long time. It's not me. You're a one-caster type of guy? It's you. <laughs> oh, oh, gotcha. <laughs> so fire, it's so sick. All right. So, so I was half right. It's a combo Warlock, but... Yeah. In a different way. You're not comboing yeah. through arcane golems. You're blasting them in the face. Yeah. Uh, there's been a few high Maligos. high profile high profile players playing this deck. Um, I feel sort of silly um, by not knowing where it originated from, but Nyria's been playing it a lot on his stream. Um, there's been a couple other players that are that are high level, but I'm not gonna give anybody credit because I just don't know. Um, just seeing where I've where I've seen it, and the main weak condition of this deck is to basically control the state of the game like a normal combo lock does, but instead of having, like you said, the double like the arcane golem faces manipulator power and woman combo, they have combos like Malagos, Soulfire, Dark Bomb, and a lot of those combos are unlocked with Emperor Thorsan. Like I mean, Malagos, nine man, you'd only be able to play one Soulfire. 
But that's huge amounts of damage that can come out with, with those couple of cards. And hmm. uh, he's got all the pieces that he needs in his hand right now to be able to do cool things. Right. So Thorsten reducing it means for nine mana, uh, Mally Ghost does nine damage with Soul Fire and eight damage. So 17 damage mm -hmm. on turn nine. Yep. And if he pokes up another Soul Fire, that's 21 damage. Uh, the deck that I've... I love it. This, this is the first thing that I did as soon as uh, Thorison came out. I slapped him in so every single possible combo deck, <laughs> whether it's through chargers or spells. Um, I mean, I, I even threw it in this Freeze Mage for Seat Story Cup. That was yeah. really fun. And then everyone started doing that too. It's really cool stuff, man. It's one of the sickest decks out there, let me tell you. Yeah, I think one of the decks that this deck is actually... St really strong against is the Handlock Mirror because it's got a lot of cards. Uh, I mean, the the first however many turns are very similar to a normal Handlock. You don't have uh, usually you don't have Mountain Giant. Sometimes you even do, and you have all the answers that a normal Handlock would have to yeah. deal with other Handlock things like Owls and BGHs. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, he's he's going to control the other board really effectively. He's got Mortal Coil here. He's got a uh, Black Wing Corruptor, or even Tap Implosion, Thorson to just make things cheaper. It's a lot of versatility in the deck. Yep. And there's no way to answer Thorson. What if this Mally Ghost becomes seven mana, TJ? What are you gonna do with your life when he hell fires for eight damage and <laughs> kills himself? Yeah, that is actually. I don't know. Uh, wait, wait. It sounds weird, but that's actually a huge threat. Or Mally Ghost on the board, and then you implosion. <laughs> Literally. Fill the board with hints. It's, it's, it's crazy. I've seen it before. Oh, God. It actually happens more often than you than you'd think. I mean, a lot of players say, oh, well, Malagos, it's like a combo. But sometimes Malagos just lives on the board. It's really hard to remove. It's 412. It's a Ysera, effectively. What Ysera is sometimes well, really hard to it's remove. it's a Malagos. So <laughs> I'm talking about the body because most people are more accustomed to seeing a Ysera than a Malagos. Maybe not as much nowadays, but... Are there any other 412s? Um, I don't think so. I think every dragon's an 8-8 eight, eight, or 6-8. Eight. Yeah. Or no, 12-12. Deathwing. So, a Deathwing that got Humility played on it and then got Sharp Sword oiled. Yep. So, that's a 4-12. That's a it is. Yeah. I mean, or a... No, it's pushing it. I mean, you could do that with any 8-8. Eight, eight. Like an 8-8 eight, eight that got Aldor, Sharp Sword oiled, and Double, double Power were shielded. So... Also true. Oh my god. The Soul Fire for zero mana. We're back, boys. Discards him, Gang Boss. Who cares? You played Mally Ghost. He said he had no way to deal with Thorsten, not even a silence. Yep. And this Hellfire is eight damage. Implosion for nine damage. Wait, is implosion? Wait, 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 wait. Does implosion deal damage to only minions or can it deal damage to anything? No, it's only minions. Okay. Because if it can deal damage to the face and you create nine imps, mm -hmm. I've actually, I mean, my life would be complete, TJ. You could kill me right now, yeah, and I'd be satisfied with everything that I've witnessed. Yeah. An implosion for nine, creating five imps on the board. I actually won a, uh, a ladder game because I was playing implosion. So and my opponent was at two health, and I just pointed the implosion at their face for like five seconds, like it was a different spell, like Bane of Doom gotcha. or Soulfire or something, and they conceded. Oh, right. And then I said, <laughs> <laughs> exactly like that. You though. said that. It was an emulation. Mm. I think he's gonna want to silence this uh, this Mali ghost. Yeah, for sure. Cause he could, but still, like you said, a pretty big threat. Huh? I mean, actually, Lotheb stops spells from being played, too. Or so he thinks! He's gonna implosion that <laughs> thing! <laughs> he is about to rock Lotheb's world! And not even call him back! And he has a... Oh, he's gonna heal bot. Alright. Okay. So he can play the uh, Defender of Argus instead. My seal for Ar well, like... That's if, probably yeah. more sensible. No, it's the more, it's the more sensible play. If he didn't draw the Defender of Argus, though... Man, he would have had some pretty crazy wild stuff on the board. Yeah, but, I mean, this isn't the greatest position for lead paint. He's got control of the board, but if his Malikos gets silenced, a lot of his late-game power 
is in that card and his spells. Kind of, but there's got to be more dragons. There has to be a Saren here. It just, it just like, has to be. Maybe Nefarian. Like, why would you play Blackwing Corruptor if you had one dragon? Well, Alex Draza. Yeah, exactly. So there's other dragons that are threats. Twilight Drakes. Twilight Drakes. Okay, so you have three, four dragons. But you, you probably played Nefarian, right? Or you, Sarah? To be honest, I don't know. The list, one of the lists that I saw didn't play Ysera. But um, it would make sense. A lot of sense, actually. But there's a lot of cards that you got to fit in here. Like, there's those, uh, the Technicians, the Three Fives, uh, Black and Corruptors, Implosions, Dark Bombs, Soulfires, Hellfires, Twilight Drakes, Antique Yield Bots. Like, the deck, it's like a handlock that just takes out a couple cards. Ooh, oh, Azure Drakes. Drakes. Okay. So, I don't think there's a Ysera, to be honest. I could be proven wrong, though. I mean, there's a lot of... Would you give a... Per what are the chances, TJ, <laughs> that Ysera is in this deck? Nine out of ten that it's not. Zero percent chance. Zero percent chance, TJ. Zero percent chance that Ysera is in this deck. You are incredulous, my friend. All right, implosion, reasonable. Drake, Drake to draw would also be really good. Keep in mind that he's just a few points off of lethal until he draws that Drake, by the way. He's got 20 damage, I think, next turn from two Hellfires. Oh, no, no, he would kill his own minions by doing that. Oh, yeah, Hellfire for four damage kills everything on the board. Yep. But Dark Bomb and Hellfire is eight damage plus the second Hellfire, which is 11 damage. So he's got 11 damage from the hand, assuming a Drake survives. He's going to hold off on this, let his opponent deal with the rest. He can play Molten Giant Shadow Flame if he had it, but Modern Leopard going with the double big game Hunter has only situational cards. It's a pretty bad hand. He's got a pair of Watchers, a pair of Hunters, and a pair of Giants. And the big game Hunters are not effective in this matchup. I think mm -hmm. Alex Straza might be the only target for a big game Hunter in the whole deck. Pretty sure. I'm a little sad that Lead Paint's going to win. Uh, or, or not going to, but... <laughs> Ouch! It's like, I want to see this deck again. And just, like, oh, okay. destroy every single deck with Maligos. Well, you're upset if he wins this. If but he loses it's really the whole cool. Like, I actually kind of hope Lead Paint uh, advances through the whole thing now. Yeah. Oh, that's really useless. Hellfire and a Dark Bomb to clean it up. Uh, but I... But mol mol two Molten Giants... That also means he's dead, though. He's got two Hellfires and a Blackwing Corruptor and a Dark Bomb mm -hmm. that he could fit. That is and Maligo survives. Yeah, that's actually quite a few dragons. Double Twilight Drake, double Azure Drake. Wow. Maligos, assuming, or assuming Alex Straza. 0% chance there's a, a Ysera. But, you know, good effort. Yeah. By you. Good stuff. Lead Paint takes game number one with... His Mally Ghost Warlock deck. I don't know. It's just basically Dragon Warlock. 0% yeah. <laughs> chance. Really cool, though. Really cool. As soon as I saw the mulligans, I was thinking, oh, man. That's Dragon. Uh -huh. I was yeah. wrong. Yeah. That was wrong. Yeah. TJ, 0% chance, Sanders. Ouch. I hope that nickname doesn't That's stick because it's terrible. <laughs> All right. 0% oh. chance, QT. How about that? <laughs> that makes it better. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, God. All right, so uh, we have Hunter, Warrior, Warlock, still from Modern Leopard. The Warlock's gone, so there's Warrior and Druid remaining. Lead Paint, I hope that he legitimately just brings out Dragon decks and everything. Just mm -hmm. Dragon Warrior. Yep. And then Dragon Druid. Who cares? It doesn't even make sense. You just ramp with Dragon? Sure. Yeah. You play, um, you play Blackwing <laughs> Technician. Rain just played... You play Dragon Sarah. Yeah, you just you're just actually. dragging it up. Yeah, he had mild success with it at rank four. Rain had mild success. No. <laughs> on the stream yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, on his stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw him messing around with it. It's cool. Yeah. I yeah. mean, the fact is, dragons are awesome. They're one of the coolest mythological creatures that you can ever like, oh, also, explore in terms of tribal synergy. It's sort of a unique... The mechanic of dragons are unique, where you're, like, rewarded for holding on to them. Um, like, because that's... There's not anything else right. that you 
um, have things in your hand that activate. Yeah, I mean, that you play. this is what's going to happen. Every set that comes out from this point on is going to probably include a dragon or two, right? Just like how there's always another Murloc added, even though it's not a Murloc expansion. Yeah. Or, you know, there's a couple of things that might get added for mechs. You know, when mech mm -hmm. expansion came out, Hard was going converted into a mech. Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things uh, might end up start coming out. I, I really hope that one day we can also see some fusion of stuff, like... It'd be really cool if some things were like a mech and a dragon, and you can kind of fuse things. That's why you don't have to only make it mech. It can be like, for example, the dragonly mechanic. That little dragon thing that comes out, it's a mech, but it's also kind of a dragon. Yeah. So you want there to be. Well, it, it'd be sweet mech. if you could combine the two of them in some capacity, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Like, this is where the, the brilliance of magic came in. It's not just the colors and the wheels and how they relate with different factions and tribes, but it's when you start combining them and do really cool stuff, mm -hmm. like red, green, white, and you start having swarm boards with, like, really powerful turns, or yeah. you do, like, black, blue, white, and stuff like that. I, I think it's really sick. Well, Hush Run's a young game, so it's got, it a, is. There's it's got a, a lot of room this, to develop. You know, the ceiling is through the roof, but I don't even understand, um, you know, how some cards can continue to d develop into the design space of dragons. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to see the future expansions, like where they continue to explore dragons. So. Me too, Dan. Me too. Uh, this matchup, though, it's going to be Druid versus Warrior. Modern Leper was uh, um, the guy in his regular season week. When I talked to him, he said, if, if you don't bring Grim Patient Warrior, you're making a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what he said. And, well, maybe Lead Paint does have Grim Patient Warrior. Maybe he doesn't. What do you think there's a chances, TJ, of a dragon being in this druid deck? Pretty high, actually. 100%. 100%? Damn. Azure Drake. Right, that's a dragon. I was actually testing you. Yeah. I was thinking for a second. I was really about, about to say 0%. This? A legendary dragon. A legendary dragon. 0%. 0% chance a legendary dragon yeah. comes out. Mm -hmm. Well, this is going to be really t uh, annoying to deal with, the Frothing Berserker, but he's got the silence on it with Key Brother Grove. That's stuff to do. Two Ancient of Wars uh, curving out from 4 to 7. That's what the coin is for normally. But uh, the coin, unfortunately, belongs to the Warrior player. That's... A death spite, perfect draw for the the curve, so you can set up for a really good Thorson next turn. The Ancient of War placed in Druid, of course, made popular by Raynad. At least that's what he'll tell you. Do you think uh, there's any merit to playing Fire War Axe? So we can get two cards off of Battle Rage. I don't think so. I think uh, Death Spite's better here. Well, what are you setting up with Death Spite? Uh, a snipe on whatever comes out for five mana plus Thorson next turn because you can coin it. Mm. Okay. So I don't. I don't really these. think there's any rush. Well, it's not rush to play it's... the Despite. Oh, well, it's, it's kind of Russian. Is it rush? Yeah, I think so. That is not Russian. Despite is the most important card in this deck. This is one of the decks where you you want to be. You're never conservative with Despite, but if this. This is one of the warrior deck where you want to be more conservative than any of the warrior deck. Well, it goes for more card draw instead. Well, uh, yeah, that's... It's like the whole point of early game, right, for the warrior. Yeah. Despite doesn't okay. set up for anything on your end. It sets up for something on uh, his end, like you deal with a sludge belcher. Well, now I guess he still can do the same thing, Thorson. Yeah. And you get more uh, value out of Thorson because you took your turn last turn to draw cards. It just felt like if you played Thorson and then you had Death's Bite to help clear, then you get like Whirlwind Effect and then you play the Battle Rage for one mana. But I, it, this sequencing ends up so that way he draws more cards preemptively. And the cards that do end up getting drawn are like super high values. Look at it, like um, Warsong, Commander, Frothing Berserker, all gonna be really cheap. Yeah. This is tough for the Druid to deal with. In fact, he doesn't have a way to deal with Thorson. No. He has to silence it. It's a really clunky hand. I mean, three seven drops um, from the get-go, essentially, was not what he wanted to see. Well, with no wild growth or inner rate, that's definitely not the, the sequence of cards he wanted to draw. Nope.
So now you can start uh, setting up stuff, you know, setting up the death spy. Just wait till he draws that Grim Patron. Probably you can get away with slamming first here. Unless he wants to play um, the Sludge Belcher, so that way he has a bigger board for things. But ideally, what I'd like to develop a Death Spite soon. Ah, this is this turn is kind of weird, just because it, he's like one man away from doing really powerful things. Like he's one man away from being able to play Sludge Belcher and Death Spite, which would be sort of ideal. Right. Um, if he slams, he's he slams and. Sludge Belchers, it's awkward because he just wasted the two damage from the slam, slam effectively. Um, so he's got to be a little bit more creative with his turn if he wants to use his mana effectively. Wow, he's going aggressive. Yeah. Okay. This and is that's uh, seven damage. It's really hard for Drew to clear this. Yeah. So he's taking the initiative on it. There's some matchups with Grim Page and Warrior where you need to utilize Frothing Berserker as a win condition, uh, like against Control Warriors or against uh, Priests. Like more controlly priests, uh, but against most decks, especially decks that you know you'll get lots of grim patron value off of, you can use your frothing berserker early just to apply pressure. And I really um, like the early frothing berserker plays because sometimes, actually most of the time, you're forcing your opponent to play suboptimally in order to deal with it. If he draws uh, execute, is that like game? Holy smokes! It might just be game anyway. He despites into this, double whirlwinds, attacks him with the cruel taskmaster. In a rage. In a rage. Let's see, that would be um each Each th whirlwind's plus five damage right now. Yeah, so, so that's gonna be a sixteen damage hit plus, plus in a rage would be extra three damage. Uh oh, did he whirlwind again? Oh he whirlwind again without attacking into the cruel task. I oh, he loses a little bit of damage here. That's still gonna be Is still that gonna be enough? Yeah, I think so, because uh, it gains the three damage from the inner range. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Wow! <laughs> what bait's like, okay! Not bad. Well played, sir. And he finds That was it. really well played from Modern Leper. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, those sometimes those turns are possible, and it just yeah, good stuff. How it, well played. Yeah, the double whirlwind draw off the slam is exactly what he needed. I mean, that wasn't even he was in a great spot. Even if he drew into something that was he less had him consequential, too, right? Yeah, he yeah overkilled him by a little bit. He also lost damage on the cool taskmaster. So. Yeah, he was at uh, what twenty four health, and he could have done twenty eight damage. Yeah, somewhere around there. Mm -hmm. That's without Nuts. Grim Patron. That wasn't even Grim Patron Warrior. That was just... That was just Frothing Berserker. The Frothy Warrior. Uh, but he's going to tie the series up one-to-one. -one. Uh, Lead Paint. Still have yet to see his Warrior deck. Educated guests would say it is Grim Patron Warrior. Yeah. I mean, it is a really powerful deck. And it seems like Modern Leper is really good at it, too. Like, he he's, takes his time, thinks it through. i uh, sure he made a mistake with the Cool Taskmaster, but he definitely is still able to figure out. And the, the navigation through it was really... Really sharp mm -hmm. as well. But that's a tough matchup. Like, the Druid in general, as much as you can try and get those Ancient of Wars to stop the damage, if your opponent draws a lot of cards early on and you have a slow start, you're going to have a bad time. Yeah. So, uh, even despite that, I think uh, Lead Paint still might be in a pretty okay spot. It really does depend, though, on whether or not this Druid deck is just going to get pushed out. If that's a mid range warrior and, if, and Lead Paint's playing his, his handlock, I mean, those are two decks that can definitely take down the Druid. Yeah. More druids today than we saw yesterday. Yesterday we only saw one druid. The whole day, only one druid. Um, it seems like it's getting pushed out just because a lot of the decks, uh, like you sort of just mentioned, that are popular right now really just are tough matchups for druid. Yeah, they're muscling it out. Yeah. Uh, but of course, a druid will always find at least a small place in the meta just because of the nature of druid. Whoa! Unintentional pun. Sorry. Um... Because they can have explosive. <laughs> I, sometimes I just surprise myself. Because um, they can have explosive That's starts good, with wild growth and intervene. And if you can't, you can't enjoy, you know, if you can't enjoy yourself, TJ, then what's the point? Exactly. If you can't laugh. We can have fun. I must protect the wild. Speaking of innervate. Yeah, innervate is a really important card. Now, swipe is. 
pretty valuable against the face hunter, but you just have no guarantee, so you should throw it back. Try to get a better curve. Keeper that grows what you'd look for. Ooh, or this. Innervate Shade, Coin Shade. Mm, but now you have a, a Fire Drop as well, so you could pass turn one, Coin Shade, and then Innervate Sludge Belcher. Or Coin Innervate Sludge Belcher, play Shade. It depends yeah. on how you want to sequence it. Get in there and fight. Yeah. I think it, a lot of it depends on the drop that he gets over the next turn, but a lot of times the delayed sludge belcher I don't think is bad as long as you're doing things early on that control the state of the board, which double shade sure. is fantastic for doing that. Right. On a creeper is very problematic though. It is pretty annoying. All right, he is going to hold hold on to it. So, um, yeah, he's got a curve. Yeah, that's actually a pretty fantastic curve. He doesn't want to throw it out, so he just gets baited easily. Glaive Zuka is something. Thing is, uh, knife juggler here is just unprotected, gets sniped easily. If he kill commands now, he put him down to twenty one, but he doesn't have too much damage to back it up. He's got four from Glaive Zuka, I guess five from the battle cry. Mm -hmm. And you're still piecing a lot of other things. Uh, so Glaive Zuka seems to be the choice here. Yeah. Depends what kind of hunter this is as well. Right. This could be one that ends up slowing down and has high mains. As much as it looks like it's all indications of face hunter, we've been surprised many times in the past. We have. Like yesterday. Was the last time I remember feeling surprised at what was included in a hunter deck. Absolutely. And now, the challenge. Oh, oh, did you want to see something else, TJ? No, I was just gonna. Um, That's a nice draw. Yeah. I was so, gonna say the obvious that he's gonna coin out the I want to say that because this is the Pilot Shredder, I think this is the Hybrid Hunter. Pilot Shredders have always been on the very edge of the fence on whether or not it's. Um, oh, that's not a bad draw either. These guys are just top decking each other and wrecking. Yeah. Um, the, the Pilot Shredder has always been on the edge of whether or not it goes in Face Hunter or it goes into um, the mid-range Hunter. But yeah. I think because Pilot Shredder treads the fence so well, it kind of works in both favors. It's so resilient, so that way aggro decks can benefit off of continual repeti repetitive damage. Mm -hmm. It also controls the state of the board if you want to play more of that mid-range style because it curves into the high main a lot more powerfully, so you just control the state of the board so the 6-5 ends up doing a lot of damage. Yeah. I wonder. I really like this sort of hybrid deck. Um, yeah. Do you like this situation though, that you feel like you have to kill command the shade before it gets gets out of control? Yeah, uh, it's a really tough situation. Uh, also, because you think, well, next turn's turn five, and he still has the coin. Like right. whatever he's gonna is gonna come out next turn, I'm gonna have to find a way to deal with that also. And right. using my kill command here basically puts me into a situation where. I'm going to have to probably use my Eagle Horn Bow to attack into this. Mm -hmm. And one thing that these hunters don't have, unless they run Colt Master, is sort of um, like depth of hand, I guess. That longevity. Because they don't have ways to refill their hand, other than like Quick Shot, which is just not a very reliable way. Mm, it's not even necessarily refill, it's just like a cantrip. Yeah. Speaking of which, Quick Shot does come into the hand here, and that's a. Uh, it's like an okay way to deal with things. I think you'd rather keep the quick shot and hero power here. Yeah. Although you do give up your 1-1s one anyways, no matter what scenario. Mm -hmm. Actually, if you don't use your quick shot, then the knife juggler... Knife juggler goes down to 1 health. That's not very good either. You know that your opponent still has the coin, so you can play 5 drop and coin hero power. Quick shot might have to be used. If he uses unleash the hounds... That's also really feeble, too. Mm -hmm. Especially if the juggle goes face. Right. Then it's just one extra damage, which doesn't do anything, um. essentially. <laughs> yeah, this has to hit. Oh. oh! Okay, it does. And then that juggle gets to survive. That was a pretty big deal. Yeah. He can keep applying pressure. The knife juggler is going to survive through just the hero power. Right. He oh, he's safe. Oh, my. Now, uh, that's something I wasn't expecting. Huh. I mean, I guess the damage is spread out. Right. 
But that seems... It's like you better not have Swipe or even a Wrath for one. But it's like one of the things where I suppose if his opponent had um, Dr. Boom and he wanted to queen it out for some reason, he'd like disincentivize that. But this is... I thought this was played so that you can protect the knife juggler. That's what I originally thought. Yeah. It is. It does maximize your damage over the next two turns, though. Well, he's out of cards. Quick shot can be used, but he can't empty his hand beforehand. Right. And now Mad Scientist comes into the hand. Both keepers have been used. Oh, that was a different game. Yeah. Still a lot of damage. That's seven damage dealt this turn. Ancient of Lore is pretty clutch, though. Oh, and that's that's pretty good. So that way you can do damage. You can start racing now because you have six damage from the hand. Mm -hmm. and that's 16. You put him at 15. He has to trade in now. Uh, unless you're worried about kill command, so... I don't necessarily... Yeah. So or Houndmaster, even. Kill command, punish. 8, 10, 11. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of respect. Interestingly enough, now if Minor Leopard is playing the hybrid, truly, because Two Glaive Zuka is in the hybrid, then he's afraid of uh, Freezing Trap, because Freezing Trap on the Ancient of Lore gives him heal in the next two turns. Yeah, especially with an empty hand, it's going to be hard for him to find that extra five damage. Right. Well, he's got Glaive Zuka over two turns, so he could play this weapon and then um, just go, like, all face. Yeah. Or he can try and control that Ancient of Lore, but then lose out a lot of damage. Losing five damage here is really painful. I mean, he can put him to four and refill his hand. That's, or not refill, but draw, another draw card, an extra card. Which, if it taps into another quick shot, which I, I don't think the other deck does run two quick shots, but if he chooses to, if he does choose to, he can. Oh, it's explosive. Okay. Okay. Oh, so sorry. I thought he was aiming for uh, something else instead. What secret is this? Dude? Swipe! Oh! Off the top. Yikes! That's and Modern Leopard knows as soon as he pointed at it, he's like, oh. Not quite. What was Off the top. And he gets the Ancient of War back, so that's right. going to be. No, the weapon charge that was done. Yeah. Four damage next turn, unless he quick shots into Huffer or something equivalent to that. Does he play Haunted Creeper? I guess so, since it's just board resilient. Even though Kill Command would only still do three damage. But he knows his opponent has the Ancient of Lore. Okay, so Ancient of Lore would bring him up to 12. He'd have three. Kill Command would be nine damage total next turn. And that, that's like best case scenario. That's the maximum amount of damage. Quick shot into do. Kill Command. I think he's used both quick shots, hasn't he? As far as I know, I think he only used one. And, and a lot of and the deck that I was yeah. looking at only runs one. Yeah. So this eliminates combo. Of but the savage war and force of nature. Uh, Two picky mono druids. Lead paint has got the hand lock. Uh, he's got the hand lock in his sights. Yeah, that's. <laughs> he's ready. I, I mean, I think Lead Paint has a really good chance of, like, advancing to the land finals, man. Mm -hmm. I'm really loving this deck and this playstyle. He's also statistically likely, statistically more likely than other players, because he has two shots even if he doesn't make it today. It's true. He can come back on Sunday and, and try again. So. And that's going to do it. Modern Leopard draws short, and that Hunter deck has fallen to the Druid. Mm-hmm. And we still don't have closure on whether or not this is the aggressive or the hybrid, but we're think we're leaning towards the hybrid. No high mains, and uh, the kill command had to be used early. Lead paint escapes from this game by a skin of his teeth. Mm -hmm. Six health remain. It was really close. He's also just one win away from securing his spot in the semifinals of today, where he'll be two games away from then right. qualifying for the land finals. So the only deck he has left is the warrior. Freezing Trap is usually so effective against Druid because they're a deck that relies so much on uh, snowballing tempo with early innervates yeah. and wild growth.
And freezing trap in that position was the worst possible trap. If yeah. it was anything else, it would have been okay, even if it was snipe. Because... <laughs> Sniped. Because <laughs> even if it was sniped, it, w it wouldn't have bounced back to Ancient of Lore because he ended up living by like six health, which means he could have gone face more often instead of playing for board. Yeah. And uh, he would have been able to get Mad Science was doing damage in. You were saying that he could have gotten him to four that turn if he just went all in? Yep. Okay. But then his opponent would have traded to Scientist, bounced back to Ancient of Lore anyways, and then he would have had to deal with Lothab. Yeah, it was uh, right. too risky of a situation. Sure. And he would have had to... He wouldn't have been able to control which buff the Glibzuka went on, which would have made it even more awkward. So he could have put him at 12, but there was not many situations where uh, that would have been the right play. Sure. With sure. The state I, of the I'm board. just kind of evaluating, could Modern Leper have done anything that would have won him the game had he known the hands and the, the cards that would have played out? Yeah. And I think the answer is no, but that's always subjective. We're going to Warrior versus the Hunter. TJ, what are the chances that we'll see a legendary dragon in this warrior deck? Oh, man. That's actually really tough. It's 50-50. No. 0%. 0%. 0%. You drop 50% in less than two seconds. Well, because it's like 50-50 whether or not it's patron or control. Gotcha. If it's control, it's 100%. If it's patron, it's 0%. What about Blackwing Corruptor? Hmm. 20%. Victory or death. Yeah, actually, still 20% after well, Brawl, seeing that hand. Yeah, I mean, Brawl and Sludge Belcher. Eh, Sludge Belcher could be in Patron, but Brawl implies that it's on the side of control. Although, we have been players we did in Brawl. see that people are playing it in the Patron world. Oh. Well. Yeah, it's fantastic in the mirror. Also helps you against Zoo. Okay, keeps that spite. Excellent choice. Looking for the Fire War Axe. Shield Maiden. That definitely leans towards the control side. Let's see if he's playing uh, the normal control warrior or he's playing some dragons. I love me some dragon warrior. Me as well. Me as well. He has a golden warrior portrait. I've been seeing a lot more golden warrior portraits lately, and I'm pretty sure it's because of Patron War. But also maybe because the golden portraits have been out for a while now, so people have had a long right. time to I sort wonder. of... More to those importantly, points. Modern Leopard doesn't have a Golden uh, Hunter portrait. Well, he mainly plays on EU, so... Oh, you're right, you're right. He's from the UK. Yeah. So I don't really blame him. I don't have a Golden Hunter portrait yet. I, I don't either. It's at 470 or something. And oh, I you're close. I refuse to, to get to Golden Hunter. <laughs> just, I, just, like, out of just out of principle, because I don't want it to be one of my first ones. Yeah. I want it to be, like, the last one. Yeah. But I have a lot... A lot of games to make it with Paladin. I have like 200 wins on Paladin. <laughs> yeah. It's my least played class for sure. Yeah. You definitely want to make sure your first is special. Yeah. I, I was thinking Druid, just because it's like a pretty iconic class to what, you know, like learning, mm -hmm. you know, basics. Mine was Warrior. My second was Warlock. Warlock's really close to like 480, and I also didn't want mm -hmm. it to be my first, so. Yeah. I, go. Mm -hmm. I think Shaman's pretty close to his at like 450. Yeah. Or it's pretty impressive. All right, well, Leok ends up allowing it to trade nicely, but like we said, this deck is pretty good usually against the Hunter, especially now that he has a Death Spite set up safely at 25 health. Usually the Death Spite has a trade into things like a Huffer. That's, yeah. when, you're, that's when you're really hurting. Mm -hmm. Now, there are a lot of times in this matchup, especially against faster Hunters, you get pretty low before you start stabilizing as a Warrior. Because in the first five turns, you're pretty much just taking a beating. Like, that's how it is. Mm -hmm. Unless the hunter has a terrible hand and you have, like, double armor smith, you're most likely going to be, like, sub-15 health going into turn five, turn six against faster hunters. Now, this is a little bit of a slower variation of hunter, but uh, you usually get pretty low before you stabilize. Yeah, well, he draws an armor smith, and that allows him to stay alive. Modern Leopard's definitely going to be struggling here, although there is still a lot of damage in his hand. Animal Companion could be clutch. Mm. Misha's not that great. No, considering his opponent can get through it easily through Shield Slam. If Misha yeah. was guaranteed to protect your minions and do damage, that would have been great. Now it's like, uh, do I let this uh, Acolyte or do I get this damage in? Do I let it live? 
do I deny it from being drawn three cards? It's or? it's like a lose lose. Right. Because if you draw the if you deny the armor the acolyte, you're effectively wasting four damage because you're also giving him an armor from the armorsmith. True that. Um, you hit if, him in the face for four sixteen. Yeah. If you go face, you let him control his fate with both the armorsmith and the acolyte. So potentially right. next turn he could not only draw more cards but also gain a lot of armor. Unless he plays Freezing Trap, that denies one of them. Yeah. Quick shot. Oh man, that armor smith has been pretty good to him. Five health. Yeah. Oh, sorry, six. The second armor. Or he could do both. And now, I mean, I don't think shield block shield slam is even necessary. Despite seems like a perfectly reasonable option. Especially, look at all that life gain. He's got 15 points of life gain in his hand. And Alex draws him. And Alex draws Well, actually, he, at, at this point, it could be one of those things where he could stabilize so well that he could use Alex Straza and Gromash to go on the offensive. Yep. It's, it's very rare, but it is a possibility. And... It is a lot of damage still. Yeah. But two cards left in the Hunter's hand. Um, he will go down to 11 here, but he'll be able to bring himself back up to 16. Next turn, he could bring himself back up to like 24 if Hero Power is the only source of damage. He's going to get the Shield Maiden bounce back from the Freezing Trap. I don't know if can draw just damage point after damage point, though. Also true. But there's two shield blocks. That's like the really devastating thing. There's a shield block, shield slam, and then the Miss Shield Maiden bounces back. Yep. That's 20 points of life being gained. He's going to have to, by the end of this game, if he would have won, he'd probably have to do like um, 70 points of damage. Because it'd be 20 points of extra from just the shield block, shield maintenance alone. Could be more from Alex Straza. Then that also factors in the hero powers as well. He's three points off right now. Yeah. Uh, this play, it seems risky, but there's not really many three co card combinations for eight mana that are going to kill you from 11 health. I think, is there there's any? There's one. Huffer, kill command, Huffer, and kill power. command, and hero power, yeah. But he's ready to use both yeah, animal commands, I think. Oh, yeah, Leoc and, and Misha. Uh, Misha. Yeah, so I don't think there's any other than that with one creature on the board. And he has Oh, he has just Sarah. My man. <laughs> My man, Lead Paint. He is going to be winning this series. Like, there's, it's looking very bleak for Modern Leper. Freezing trap number two. <laughs> Yikes. He's got six, eight damage. He's three short again. That shield maiden. Lead Paint didn't even need the shield blocks. Yep. I can't even remember a time where I had double shield block in my hand against a hunter and won the game without even using them. That's really, I don't even know if I want to call it impressive but I think it or just sad. happens to be that uh, this matchup is generally pretty tough for the hunter. Yeah. The face hunter usually struggles because there's so much weight life gain and whirlwind effects well, from the warrior. Also, I, one of the reasons why it's tough, I think, is shield block because of all the life gain. I mean, shield yeah. block is a life gain plus card draw, so... Marlon Leopard, the best way he can handle and not die, because he's dead through an Alex Straza play, is to somehow get rid of Gromash or Shield Maiden. Mm -hmm. I think if he unleashes, kill commands the uh, Shield Maiden, and then hits face, that might be his best chance. But emphasis on might. Yeah. I don't even know. Okay, he even trades into Gromash, he's not even sure. He's going to go for Freezing Drop again on the Shield Maiden. That one shield main in. Alex draws on yourself for the win. Yeah. And just gain nine life. Do it. Just how you do it. <laughs> or shield main <laughs> again. He's just taunting him at this point. He gained 15 health from a single shield main. That's right, man. She can definitely take the hit. Wow. And that's it. Lead Pain advances to the semifinals off the back of his Dragon Warrior. Well done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, a I'm dragon liking. warrior. He's yeah. a warrior with you, Sarah and Alex Strong. He's got Blackwing Corruptors, dude. Okay. It has I mean, to. I guess we didn't. Not, we didn't see it. I don't know it, but it's gotta have it, man. When you got, when you go like that, 
You gotta go hard. He had Sludge Belchers and Lothab. I don't know. He's got dragons in it. It's, it's a possible. dragon warrior. All right, we'll make assumptions. <laughs> it's a dragon warrior. Let Bane advances with his what is 100% a dragon warrior. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's going to move on to you face... You said 0%. Uh, he's going to move on to face the actual winner of the next matchup mm -hmm. uh, in the semifinals. Next matchup, of course, is going to be Cross 7224 versus Strife Crow. Ooh. That should be a good one. Japan versus USA. Mm -hmm. And both these guys had sort of polar opposite finishes. Strife Crow made it really far, lost to the eventual winner in his week, which was Life Coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, Cross was the very first player eliminated with a, a pretty feeble score. That's right. He tried playing Priest, and we were like, well, can Cross win with Priest? And it turned out the answer was no. Yeah. All right. Well, Cross 7224 versus Strive Crow up next. That is our last uh, sort of quarterfinal matchup of the day. Then we'll move to the semifinals, and at the end of the day, we will crown a victor and invite one more person to the Legendary Series Land Final. So don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back.